God's grace and peace to you, my friends, on this second Sunday after Easter. I hope this week has given you a moment to reflect on that new life that we find in Christ. I hope you have had a chance to celebrate good things with family, with your loved ones, whether they be next to you, if you have a telephone, maybe it's on a computer, but no matter how it is, I hope you might celebrate that love and bring that love and spirit together as we join in worship with one another. Would you join me in our call to worship? The day breaks. And God does not let us go. The hour calls. And God does not let us go. The evening falls. And God holds us fast. Let us turn to God in worship. Would you join me in our opening prayer? Holy One, what a blessing and privilege we share here in this sacred space among our loving community. In the mystery of your grace, we are, all of us together, your people, and yet we are not the people you would have us be. We are at times impatient with one another. We think our way is the right way, and we fail to realize how important it is that we not only tolerate, but support and care for one another. Forgive us, change us, renew us, give us new life so that we may love and serve you in this day and forevermore. And in your Son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our scripture today comes from the third chapter of the book of Acts. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer, three o'clock in the afternoon, and a man lame from birth was being carried in. People would lay him daily at the gate of the temple called the Beautiful Gate so that he could ask for alms for those entering the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked them for alms. Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and he said, Look at us. And he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I have no silver or gold, but what I have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up. And immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. 
jumping up, he stood and began to walk and entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. All the people saw him walking and praising God, and they recognized him as the one who used to sit and ask for alms at the beautiful gate. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Here ends our reading. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, worship Your holy name. The sun comes up. It's time to sing our songs again Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me And we singing when the evening comes Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul Worship your holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul. Worship your holy name. You're rich in love and your soul to anger. Your name is great and your heart is thousand reasons for my heart to find. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, worship Your holy name. On that day when my strength is failing, the end draws near and my time has come. Still my soul will sing your praise unending. Ten thousand years and then forevermore. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, worship Your holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul. Worship Your holy name. I will worship Your holy name. The story of the third chapter of Acts is built around this life that Peter and John were carrying on with in Jerusalem. After Jesus had been ascended up, as he said to the Father, as the disciples finally started to understand what it is they were supposed to be doing, they would go to the temple. They would pray. They would take care of the people in need. They would take care of those in their own community and those who are not in their community. Peter and John would go not on their own power, not because they were followers of Christ, but because the Holy Spirit empowered them to do the work of the kingdom of God. So we know pretty much nothing 
virtually nothing about this beggar. We know he was born lame from birth. We know he's a man in this story, as most stories had men in them. We don't know his name, his age, where he's from. We don't know what is really going, going on in his life. We don't know his nationality. We don't know his political affiliations. We know nothing. But one thing, we know one thing about this man. He is a broken person. We read, Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, look at us. And he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I have no silver or gold, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. Now there's a miracle for you. But let's not talk about miracles. Let's not think about a healing miracle in the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of so many people struggling with sickness and illness that somehow, because of the power of God, that click, snap, pop, everything is fixed. I don't think it's helpful, especially at this time. But I'd like to talk about a second miracle, if you will. This miracle of how they engage with this broken person. Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said to them, look at us. And he fixed his attention upon them. The act of truly seeing someone is in and of itself a miracle. I know we've talked about before how Jesus saw people. But the seeing of people is a bigger deal than you'd realize. When I worked in the city of Chicago and would be wandering in the neighborhoods doing ministry, as it were, for the different programs I worked with through the seminary, one of the most important things I heard time and time again from people who were struggling, who were on the margins, who were homeless and hungry and broken, was that people walked by them like they didn't exist. And I'll be honest with you, more often than not, when I see someone begging or looking like they're trying to get my attention and I just don't want to take the time or energy to do it, I walk away. I ignore them. I have a pre-made line to say, I can't help you. And that is not the work of the kingdom of God. Now, I'm not saying you need to be handing out money to every single person who asks. I don't think that is what we're looking at either. But taking a moment to see someone, to be able to look at them and see them for who they are, is a miracle. Now let's also think about this broken man, this beggar at the gates. I think if we're honest with ourselves, we could and probably should all put ourselves in that same position of that broken man. There are jagged parts of every single one of our lives that cause us to struggle. There are broken pieces that may never be healed for us. And we should have empathy and compassion for that broken one because we know what it is to be broken. So here's the rub. You can't start the healing process until you're seen. So, what is it in your life that's broken? What is it that needs healing in your life? What needs to be seen? Maybe you're not quite ready to go there yet. Maybe you need to be seen more deeply by the one who calls you his own first before you can be seen and known and start that process with those closest to you. But, in this time of waiting, even you, even we, have the ability to perform that same miracle of Peter and of John, that same miracle of Jesus by seeing others. Maybe this time of waiting in this pandemic, maybe this time of waiting in the time of the coming kingdom of God is a call for us to better see one another. Maybe this time is calling us to more deeply connect and care for those in our midst, in our congregation, our neighbors, our community. 
Maybe we can build the kingdom of God even further in this time of waiting by seeing each other better, by recognizing that we are all God's children, holy and beloved, no matter what. So what are you waiting for? You've been issued the invitation. So what are you waiting for? May you be seen in your brokenness. May you be seen by the living God whose presence goes with us in all that we do. May you be seen this very week as the wonderfully created child of God that you are. So my friends, go and do likewise and see one another. Amen. Would you join me in a time of prayer? God, we give you thanks that we may be a community even if we are scattered. We give you thanks that the hearts and minds of all of your people who gather in the name of St. Paul's share the love of Christ in their heart, share that same love for their friends and family and neighbors, the love that calls to them to say, you are a child of God. We give great thanks that we might come together as a people to worship, to pray, to celebrate our faith, to live the new lives that come in resurrection, that we might do and be the people you have called us and created us to be. We would ask that for all of those who are sick and struggling, for those who are finding loneliness to be overpowering, that you be with them. Give us strength and courage that we might minister to them, to remind them that they are not alone. Help us when we stumble, lift us when we fall, and in all things remind us of the goodness of your Son, the way that he lived his life and called us into that same new life. For all the blessings, God, that you have poured out upon us day in and day out, we give thanks in your name, and we pray as your Son taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Let us pray. God, we give you thanks that we have gifts to offer. We offer up our very lives in service for you and your kingdom. Let the lives that we live, the way we touch one another's lives and fill each other with joy and love, be the same kind of love that Christ has poured out upon each one of us. For all of your good gifts, we give thanks in your son's name. Amen. Now, my friends, may the Lord bless and keep you. May his make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and always give you peace. Go in peace and serve the Lord, my friends. Amen.